uh, that 100 Thieves is going to be bringing into the table. And Nitro already flexing a little bit of that with a Bulldog getting the opening frag onto Sub Rose. That looks like it's going to be a hit onto AC Mall. Pretty standard stuff as they brute force their way in. Unfortunately for Asuna, Drone wins that challenge with the classic, and now it's all down to haste from ranged. Not around that we considering 100 Thieves are very comfortable in the position that they're at. When are TSM going to stop the bleeding? This round is going to be a little bit difficult. Oh, Vordell does have the operator, and he's one point away from the Blade Storm. So he definitely can be impactful, but he's got to be a little bit careful. On the opposite side, the sooner he's going to feel that pain. And now trying to run away. Steel left. finds him in the cross, trying to escape through the tree room, and that's going to open up this A site wide open for 100 feet. Oh, yeah, and it goes from bad to worse for TSM as Hayes and Drone are going to be sitting on the sideline for the rest of the round. 100 Thieves once again in firm control and the spike there. Furthermore, they have the Hunter's Fury. If things get spicy, if they need to provide something a little bit extra, Hiko has that ultimate there to be able to pick it. Well, all right, never mind. <laughs> he goes taking out as well. Uh, but still, TSM just down to Cutler, looking to save that operator, maybe get a frag on the way out, ideally. He's certainly going to get a chance as he takes out Nitro, uh, and he's just going to get the heck out uh, of Dodge. But nonetheless, 100 Thieves, as you mentioned, are going to come out of the gate swinging a four-round lead. But at the end of the day, I think the fans want TSM versus Sentinels because that would be, once again, a similar bloodbath that happened at the FaZe Clan Invitation. Lockdown has been used. Wardell opts to go aggressive, and he gets punched in the mouth at the hands of Asuna. The lockdown is still there. As Drone follows up, he's going to trade it back and is able to take care of the lockdown. That's a huge play from Drone. For 100 Thieves, it was the pump fake all along, heading towards that A side. They were just trying to cause enough ruckus. They were looking for control of B main from TSM, but they really couldn't hold it for much longer. And that lockdown was just to sell this A side plant, which does, of course, go down. And now it's up to TSM to work their way back over towards this A side. So far, it's just hazed alongside Cutler. Asuna's gonna find Drone rotating towards that A site. So this execute works out phenomenally for 100 Thieves. They get everything they want. They get the A site plant, they get the rotations, they get control of B main. They, you know, they, they, force a lockdown for it but it still works out in the long run and 100 thieves now will lead by five rounds you know you're mentioning uh, you know the possibility of tsm and sentinels in the in the further in the you know the match to come if things go out that way i think for for 100 Shut thieves down. actually this has the opportunity to be a, a really a program defining win in the short life flash into the courtyard and Wardell will go up, see if he can spot anyone. So very similar set piece. The one difference being, obviously it was Sabrosa who got a ball and dashed in. But with 10 seconds left, the spike just now, starting to get onto the site. There's a Hunter's Fury by Hiko to clear things out. Steel's able to take care of Cutler as well. Once again, the spike goes down. 100 Thieves in control, but Simo, it's a 2v2. Yeah, is it a 2v2 for much longer? Hiko's got to watch his back. Dicey now with the op 10 HP in a dream. As TSM are narrowing in on their first round win. It's all falls to Dicey. First shot's going to connect. It's all down to Sabrosa. The 3k on the round will signify the round win here for TSM. By the question markers, do we have mid control? Not really, but an open pick is definitely going to help out. Yeah, so is that operator at the hands of Wardell. Able to make that bad boy sing as you see Nitro creeping his way up mid. Trying to establish some control. And again, it's about controlling the map, right? The fact that they're able to gain more and more real estate. And from that, more and more intelligence. It's certainly what 100 Thieves are looking to do here. They have slowly but truly crept their way onto the B side. The spike is not, but still in a position of power. Nice. Nitro was on the flank. Wardell able to take care of him. That's a big kill. It will at least be nullified temporarily, but still two members of 100 Thieves have to be careful. Steel just trying to find this pick onto Wardell, and now that the smoke subsides, he's not going to be able to find a Hiko. It's all up to you. He's got the spike, he's got shock darts, recon bowl coming in shortly, but he's up against four members of Bloodthirsty TSM players. There's going to be the swing, there's going to be the peak. Wardell with the killjoy really means that you're just trying to use a lot of that utility to deny even harder because I think the utility from Killjoy is a little bit better at stopping pushes than Cypher utility. Certainly agree that is a change that was made between the open qualifier and the closed qualifier out of folks over at TSM. Cutler's going to get a good bit of information to know there's pressure coming in from Tree Room. 
as the members of 100 Thieves flood onto the site. TSM's gonna have two over a B with plenty of utility to boot, but that's not gonna do them any good. Cutler drops, 100 Thieves in control of A. So far, so good for 100 Thieves. They'll have control of this A site. And once again, TSM sitting on the side. Well, that would be TSM have managed to put rounds together, gun rounds together. And they may be looking for that here as well. Dicey finding an early pick onto Sabroza. Doesn't double peek with Wardell. Wardell was looking towards the catwalk, maybe trying to find a player from B lobby with that angle. But of course, the smoke pushes him off. And now he's got to work on this A site by himself. I think for 100 Thieves, really anything that I listed for TSM would be great because their defensive side is strong as well. So it'll be kind of a battle of attrition between both of these teams. We got to pay attention to this side hit from 100 Thieves. Yeah, Wardell is able to get one, tries to get a second as members of 100 Thieves knock on their doorstep. Ooh. Wardell somehow manages just to get the tiniest of pixels onto Nitro, but he's traded out by Dicey as the op battle goes in favor of 100 Thieves. TSM trying to fight to regain control of this site coming in from heaven. The spike is down. Nobody has picked it up. The lockdown's gonna be used as well. Drone is might be able to wallbang somebody. It looks like he dealt some damage, but not enough to get the kill. Steel's gonna get knocked up as well. He's taken out. TSM have control of A. 30 seconds left on the clock for 100 Thieves to get this spike planted. So far, so good for TSM, but they're all huddled up. 100 Thieves making a lot left. of noise, moving up through the garden, and we're about to see a bloodbath here on the heaven side. Dicey and opting in for the Phantom instead. Drone gonna find the first pick. It's all down to Dicey. Shot's gonna be good onto the first down to the 1v2. He's gonna have to escape those shots as he drops down onto the site. 15 seconds left on the clock. He's gotta plant the spike. And all that's left is Cutler and Hayes. Left. Oh no, he cancels it. Now he wants to get involved. Ooh. Tailwind's out. He's just trying to stall for as long as he can. The lockdown does not help. And Hayes will thing in bros that was looking to try to catch some of the players out in rotation or maybe coming in from the tree room. So the fact that T7 committed three members there means that they were committed to trying to get fight those way. angles that 100 Thieves were looking oh. to benefit from. But now it's all down to the players on site. No Steel bobs and weaves in and out of the smoke. Gonna find Sabrosa. Now it's down to the 2v3. Hiko playing back. Site Steel weathering the storm of the Nano Swarm. Now has to walk through the fire and the flames. He's gonna get taken down by Wardell. It's all down to Hiko spraying so down the spike. Shock dart in hand. Gonna likely take down maybe some of the life members here from DSM, but they're still alive. They're still defusing Wardell, waiting for Hiko to peek. The shot's gonna be good. He can't defuse. Wardell's gotta run, and a hundred thieves clutch the round. Hayes playing in that position. Wardell's gonna be playing close as well. Aftershock actually pushes Asuna off. They're looking to fight this now. Hayes gonna find one, but the Empress still on here for Asuna. As he gets smoked off, the firefight will commence. Or sorry, will subside. Steel has managed to find himself incredibly deep behind enemy lines. That recon dart will not get spotted, and they know that something's cooking. sabrosa has been flanking all along, and guess what? Steel's been there as well, but it's all down to him. He's going to find two picks, but there are three members of TSM remaining. A very crazy round. A lot of flanks happening on TSM want to make this an expensive round for 100 Thieves. That's why they're playing so slow and trying to really cover all the angles here. They're gonna come from the mid side, they're gonna come from the B main side because the fact that they're together allows them to push in. Yeah. Steel gonna find one with the turret. That's a little unfortunate. But now Steel's in a lot of trouble, managing to actually take up the Nano Swarm. Now it's all up to Nitro to stop this push forward. Steel's gonna eventually swing. Gonna find three picks on the round. No Just mow them all down. No ways for Steel as he protects private. Look, we, we just got to go forward. They funnel on to B, and then guess what? It was him the entire time. So very well played by Steel. I was actually just singing his praises, and then he comes out with an ace. That was perfect. Early looks at how 100 Thieves played this round. We saw some, some of that same aggression as I highlighted. Dicey and Asuna peaking A main together. And guess who's there? Wardell, alongside the rest of TSM. Take out Asuna. Now it's all down to Dicey. That double peak worked so well against Cloud9. Time and time again, Ward uh, uh, Tens, Relics, they would all fall apart at these double peaks from 100 Thieves. The young guns really coming in. So now we have to pay attention to this A-side hit. Can the rest of 100 Thieves really stop this push? So far it's working out as that's Dicey and Nitro Steel in the courtyard. We'll find some Rosa down to the 2v1. It's all up to Cutler. He brings it down to a 1v1. Cutler versus Steel. Big brain versus other big brain. We'll see who comes out on top. Whoa. No <laughs> oh my good. They do have hazed on the opposite side. Was kind of peeking out for some info, but now he's starting to rotate over. It looks like that's where they want to go. On the other side, 100 Thieves is going to have Steel as the first line of defense, but the rest of the members of 100 Thieves have not rotated over. Now they're starting to creep their way. They have not fully bought, however, into the possibility 
of this being a B hit. Seal's gonna get some info. 30 seconds oh. left. Oh, and gonna go aggressive and Seal gives it to him anyway. Through the flash, that's a huge pick for 100 Thieves. Oh my goodness, now they're gonna try to continue to push him off. They will eventually find him, but it's traded away by Hiko. What a play there from 100 Thieves. Drone gets taken down at 23, and that's the 100 Thieves barreling down the defender's spawn. Gotta take it round by round if they even want a chance at closing out this map. 100 Thieves, they can bleed a round or two or one or three, and they'll be sitting fine. And it starts off in favor of 100 Thieves this round with Sabrosa falling early to the knives of Dicey. Well, and you heard Wardell use the Blade Storm at the same time. So early kill, as you said, going in favor of Dicey 100 Thieves with map presence, with personnel, advantage. Right now, and TSM are a bit scattered across the map. They haven't fully invested on anything. Oh. Wardell's going to spot oh. one and is able to take care of Dicey from up top. What a play. Yeah, that's going to definitely answer back for the frag onto Sabrosa. Really, it's just been Wardell and Sabrosa facing off against Dicey and Asuna, or Asuna, you however you want to pronounce it. And the fact that Wardell finds a, an answer pick for Sabrosa falling is super important steal. Now has to face this lockdown. Fortunately for him, it, it, it actually gets destroyed. Not only that, but it didn't even cover him in the first place. Shock Dart's going to take out Hayes. Steel just trying to hold the angle with the Bulldog, but unfortunately, he's not going to let it too far off the leash. Down to the 3v2. TSM forcing 100 Thieves into a retake position. Yeah, TSM is not fully healthy left. either, so this certainly isn't out of the realms of possible. The Rolling Thunder has been used drone with the third kill on the round. Certainly almost securing the with utility. Nitro trying to help out with the paranoia, oh, but Steel's like, no, no, I'm not ready to leave quite yet. So bros are gonna fall. The cheeky shock dart oh, from Hiko, no. but Steel in a left. great position. Shout out to Drone, it's not gonna Ooh. land on to Wardell. They'll be able to yes. take him down, and they'll answer back with the pick on the A side as well. Down to the 3v3, 100 Thieves in the retake. Spike TSM play. manages to get on there. Despite attempted heroics from Steel and are able to get the spike down as well. No ultimates to keep in mind here as TSM has assumed their post-plant positions. 100 Thieves is gonna be spreading out their resources a bit to try to apply pressure from a couple of different areas of the map. Hayes with the Nanostorm trying to bite things off to push them back to create some space. There's the Lear Wardell. Looked like he was going to try to get someone. It's actually Asuna. He's able to take care of Hayes, the 3v2 in favor of 100 Thieves as TSM continues. Now that he's located over there, Hiko now going to start to make his way back over. Sabrosa waiting for the cross. You see him positioned around the courtyard. He's waiting for Hiko to make his way through the B site, but he goes all the way back around. And so now Sabrosa's like, okay. By now, he should have crossed. Now, I'm going to start to get involved. And he finds the frag. Hayes has got to make his way all the way back towards the A side. Thankfully, he'll be there in time. Now, it's down to the 1v1. 17 HP up against what I assume is close within that range. No shock dart here for Hiko. So, he can't play for time. But Hayes has this planted in a perfect spot. Hiko thinks it's planted for long. But oh now gosh, the diffuse comes it. through. Oh my gosh, no way. It. Hayes thought slow down the pace of the analysis and really see what 100 Thieves can do in that following gun round. This is obviously not going to be one that I think they're going to be able to really pack a punch, but down. after that second round, 100 Thieves could not really find a whole lot of success from the pushes here from TSM. We're looking at the B side execute. Smokes are starting to go down. Players are starting to fall for 100 Thieves. And they get onto, their, onto this site, really, with relative ease. Down to two final players. They're likely going to be the next to fall. Spike is planting. You know, if you're 100 Thieves, you're really starting to think about that next round. We'll have to hold that thought as Dicey's going to find one at least early. Hiko will send that shock dart through, but with four members of Phantom with TSM, I don't imagine it's going to be a very easy hill to overcome. It all breaks down to Hiko. He's going to get sprayed. He's going to get pre fired Give presence towards the seaside. It's really just a ring around the Rosie of who can, who can pull who off of what site first. Dicey finding that pick really opens things up, though, for 100 Thieves. And I think for 100 Thieves, the important thing there was not seeing anything on the initial run. It back did not result in them swinging everything. But what wow. did swing is Sabrosa. He sneaks his way in through Garage. He's able to get two big kills there. You know, I was kind of keeping that in, in in the peripheral vision. The fact that 100 Thieves had committed so much to the A site and then were starting to pull it back, it gave Sabrosa a lot of time since they were very passive around the center of the map. Now we're seeing the plant start to go down, or at least momentarily it will. They're waiting for that Hunter's Fury to, to finally finish. And now it's the 3v4 retake. Still doable for 100 Thieves, but it's going to be difficult considering TSM have managed to get to themselves into perfect positions. Look at this paranoia ready from oh, Sabrosa. If Hayes is going to fall here. He's going to be able to swing hard and he is going to try. Well, unfortunately, he didn't swing. The paranoia does come through. He needs support there from Color down the long side. The shot's going to start to come through. The classic's going to send him down. It's all up to Wardell alongside Color.
Yeah, you hear the pinks coming out on where the spike is. They begin to defuse the spike, and the Hunter's Fury's there. The Operator from Mardell is there as well, but Dicey actually gets the best of them. Color, however, was able to take care of Asuna. A 2v1, Dicey trying to stick it. Color's gonna have to go aggressive. Color somehow gets the shot, but he go trying to defuse it. He's gonna be able to get back on it and defuse the spike. That one. Going up. At least they have a lot of presence here from 100 Thieves. They found that early pick onto Sabrosa. They find another pick onto Hayes. Dicey really keeping TSM at pay. Now the flash is going to make matters worse for Wardell. Asuna backs up. And now it's just down Cutler and Drone. Make that just Drone. As now Asuna is about to go in. He's going to use the fire to heal himself up. Finds himself in a gun duel between himself and Drone. But there's four players that remain for 100 Thieves. Shot cards start to come through. That's an operator shot. Now he swings. Cannot find the success. Uh, much like the last map, it was Dicey and Asuna who lit up the kill feed early on. We'll see if we can be able to continue that. The patience! Oh, the patience! Yep. He doesn't flick on the drone. He sticks it, and he gets Wardell. No bait had there. Yeah, and they almost were able to convert on that clone as well. Um, they were just using that to clear things out more con continuously. But now we're looking at actually TSM find what looks like to be an opposite pick or a pick to answer that aggression towards that long side. It was a little rough to start. Dicey, like you called out the patience, but the fact that they were able to answer really just nullifies those heroics. The plant now starting to go down. And now it's 100 Thieves in a retake. that We've seen this B site hit consistently in terms of how it is difficult for the defense to retake the site. It all boils down, I think, to start at least for Asuna and how he's going to make his way out of the garage into the courtyard. Here the lockdown is used to create some space. Oh, as soon as going to get a chance to get into something spicy here. The curveball comes out, but he unfortunately flashes himself. And he gets taken out. Dicey, however, is able to support with three kills of his own. He still has the Blade Storm, but he's going to get taken out. Color is going to be coming in from backside. Nico oh. takes care of him. However, wow. and the spike is diffused. He doesn't get the... Especially to do so in that fashion. Once again, a diffuse out of the hands of 100 Thieves. Really right under TSM's nose is proving to cause spits for them early on here in this ninth round tsm showing a good bit of presence up across the middle of the map you see the smokes begin to go out they have not jumped in and, and planted and pulled back out they're being a bit more methodical about this one drone's going to go in with the run it back haze is able to take care of one as well you hear the neural theft is going to expose absolutely everything as drone somehow wow. is still alive and is able to take care of steel tsm taking care of 100 thieves well, Nitro's able to at least nullify that temporarily. It's all down to one final player. It's Dicey, the ultimate there from Drone, really paying off in dividends, manages to find himself a couple more ult points for the run-up back of future. Dicey with the op. Will he decide to save it? Will he look for a couple of exit frags? Will he look to try to get a little bit more involved here? That is the bigger question as the spike ticks down. Really tough position to be in. Wardell's on the opposite side. Likely, I think, with an op as well. Okay, they're going to leave Sabrosa back to catch the flank. Sabrosa is able to take care of Dicey, but... Expect two. Yeah, they don't expect two. They don't expect two. Oh, that first shot by Steel oh. is so costly. Wardell just swings and is able to take care of him. Meanwhile, on the site, Asuna is able to take care of something. But man, it's Cutler. Cutler mowing down 100 Thieves. Just one left. For the boys in blue and that Tico, severely outnumbered and outgunned. This is a, a difficult situation for him. Now at least the shock darts are there. He's going to try to do some damage. Left. It does find its mark, but it's not as impactful. Actually fan it manages to find Cutler with the drop down from heaven. At the potential of taking an 8-4.5, but Asuna with the run it back is able to take care of one early on and continues the aggression. And it's being followed up here by Dicey. Once again, TSM want to hit the C site. Hedwig is going to let Drone in. He's going to find an early pick onto Asuna on the right side. So that's going to at least say, okay, maybe this player's backside. Hiko just trying to navigate through. And guess who's on the opposite side? It's Drone. Spike's still not down. He was waiting for it. He knew somebody was still on site. And 100 Thieves, as they were trying to plan, you know, accordingly, maybe someone's still around. Dicey with a huge flank here is going to try to find a couple of these members now working back up. Unfortunately, caught with the cloud burst in his hand. It's all down to two final members for 100 Thieves, but it is a 2v3. Doable, but difficult. Wardell with the shot, going to find it onto Nitro, all down to steal. And we've seen this position too many. This a bit aggressively. Oh my gosh, how was he not punished? Okay. 
he, is gonna, he gets taken out. Asuna looks like he just came around the corner with a curveball in tow and almost doesn't get the kill. And for, fortunately for him, he does, but Drone trades it right back out. Yeah, Wardell is just, I need that Blade Storm. Give it to me. Wanted to fight for it, but 100 Thieves pushing onto the A side. Steel's going to lead that charge. Oh, Sees wow. a Cutler on the opposite side. Gets taken down by him. Shot through the big box on the A site. Dicey just trying to find some success with the Operator. They brought this into the round. They want this to find success. And so far, considering they're down a member, not down and out, it's going to be a difficult task against TSM holding strong on this A site. They do have smokes to work with. So there are some options, but TSM does as well. And we're already seeing some of that come out. Nitro going to use some of that cover to gain a little bit more real estate across the A side of the map. No cheeky flanks coming around, at least quite yet. There we see some of the smokes from 100 Thieves. Try to smoke out members up in heaven. Nitro's going to be forced back. There's still plenty of presence left. on his site. Nice, he goes in, but Color is this in there waiting for him. Nitro's able to trade it back out, but he only has 17 health. Hiko is certainly worse for wear as well. Nitro, who's been holding things down on A short for a while. The last one standing, so going to see the implications of it. He's only going to be bringing in a sheriff, but you imagine he's going to use it early on here. Oh no! He just goes to aggressive and he gets punished. Dicey's waiting there with an operator. Wardell gets hit in the mouth. It, it go, Honestly, the paranoia goes a little south. Sabrosa now actually teleports back towards the attacker spawn. Steel is looking for him. He's hunting and Sabrosa will punish the investigation of the crime scene. It's all down to the 3v3. Sabrosa is going to be playing point, likely looking maybe for a flank. He does know that 100 Thieves did come from that side, so the flank may be a little bit more difficult to deal with. And they're going to use Hedwig to spot him out. Great presence of mind. They have to deal with Sabrosa because he's a problem. He's always a problem. And now it's all down to two final members, Drone and Cutler. They're pushing in. They find Nitro down to the 2v2. Dicey's gotten off, and he's going to be holding it down long. First, the clone's dissipating. Now it's down to Cutler and Drone. They might try to defuse. They might try to at least flash them off the angle. So far, it's not working out. That's a Hunter's Fury. Nico's, Nico's like, yeah, you think I'm going to let you defuse the spike? No. Drone. And it's going to be very difficult for 100 Thieves to push. And so now they're going to execute on both sites at the same wow. time. This smoke doesn't give a lot of information to TSM. They don't know if they've crossed. They don't know if they've come through. And now it's all up to Nitro to get back oh. onto the site, help them out. And Wardell's like, uh-oh. I know. Ooh. I know what's going on. We usually see him land those. We usually see him land those. Nitro's going to take him down. Drone's going to play point. He'll find Hiko. It's a 4v4 retake for TSM. Yeah, but they know where Drone is. The spike has gone down. The operator is sitting just right in front of Dicey. He has the Phantom to work with right now. But you see members of 100 Thieves start to pull away from the site, knowing that Drone can be a problem if left unchecked. First one's going to peek. It's going to back off. Meanwhile, on the site, Color's able to take care of Nitro. Drone finally drops at the hands of Asuna. Now they can turn their attention over onto the site. So uh -oh. Rose is there on the flake. He's able to take care of Steel. No 100 Thieves just down to two members left. Hayes gets advantage. taken out as well. And oh my gosh, TSM do it. They take the site back. They defuse the spike. And we're going to be knotted up at 10 apiece. These sense is tingling, telling him that there might be some action. And of course, there's also a smoke down. They don't see action towards the long side. No smokes, no nothing. They don't see action towards the sea long side. So they're anticipating a cheeky play. So Bros is ready for it. And now it's all down to this unfortunate spot where the spike has kind of lent itself. The paranoia will help at least dissuade from retrieving. And now they'll start to bring it back with the 4v5. Tsum start out strong. No options, no options anywhere across the map for 100 Thieves. B didn't work. They managed to recover the spike. I think there might be some action towards the sewer side. In the meantime, Sabros is in a position to deny the rotate, the fast rotate towards the C site. So 100 Thieves, they don't have a lot of time to act because they need to. This is, you know, a map that they could clean up. Steel and Dicey going to find two Wardells out of commission. They're going to find another site. They won't. It's all down to the 2v2 Nitro alongside this compadre Hiko. I've got to decide where they want to get this spike down. Plenty was invested over by A. It looks like there still might be more than Drone is going to be the first line of defense. Oh, no. Unfortunately, he gets taken out. That's going to give 100 Thieves full license to rotate away. They're going to have the numbers advantage. I don't even know if Cutler wants, or excuse me, I don't even know if Hayes wants this at this point. He's got 17 health. He's severely outnumbered. I mean, it's not like they have much to lose as far as guns go because they have money for days. So you can risk it. But 100 Thieves should be able to get onto the site and get it down with relative ease.
Oh, well, there's you have to also off that. You also have to remember, sorry, excuse me, that there is a Hunter's Fury. Oh, that's so fortunate for Nitro. He gets out. He's going to play the link side. He's going to try to wrap around, leave things up to Hiko. Hedwig comes through. Hayes doesn't smell this or hear this, but he knows that Hiko is pushing forward. Oh, beautiful play from Hayes. Neural Death's going to spot out Nitro, and Nitro is behind. It's all down to Hayes. 17 HP up against the 1 HP Nitro. They're playing cat and mouse, but oh. Nitro finds it. If they can deal with them, if they can deal with Wardell's shot here, that's going to be the big benefactor. They can't. He's out. He's gone. Finds the pick onto Asuna, and now it's 100 Thieves down to 4. Oh, the damage has been done, but it looks like 100 Thieves want to push the situation anyway. Still, considering the lockdown, you hear the Bladestorm has been used as well. They're investing everything that they have into this thing. You hear the 100 Furies being used as well to try to clear off some space and get onto the site. Wardell is just on the outside of it as the Hunter's Fury, excuse me, was able to take care of the lockdown. 100 Thieves are going to get onto the site. You hear the spike is going to go down. There's the other Hunter's Fury, this one coming out at the hands of Hiko Dicey. Choosing to go a bit more aggressive here. Keep an eye on Sub Rosa on your minimap as he once again is on the flank. That turret potentially going to spot him, give him away. Dicey in the smoke. Just on the other side, he's able to get one. Looking for the second and is going to have to back up. Gets challenged, gets the oh, second one as well. Dicey. And he gets the reset. It's looking oh! for the third. Dicey does it. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Dicey. The fact that he gets through the round's not over yet. Looking at Wardell, he's gonna drop down, down to the 2v2. He go, he go, he go, takes us into the operator. That means that he's gonna have no money for utility, no money for armor, nothing. He's just committing to the op. That's important to note because a lot of the TSM members are in and around that area where the op is located, but they've got to focus on this push towards the B site. Wardell's gonna get taken down. Nitro now backing away the 4v5 in favor of 100 Thieves. And man, he messed up Sub Rosa as well. Also very intelligent of him to be to be firing through the paranoia the entire way down until he got to cover, ensuring that if Sub Rosa were to keep that again, he'd certainly get that win. Dicey getting a big pick on there as well as TSM is down to three, but Drone getting in on the action. A very good curveball to even things up as TSM get on to A. Now they're going to be forced into the retake here for 100 Thieves. You're going to see that Hot Hands and the Cyber Cage go down. They are not going to be walking through that. That just really confirms the safety of this spike being planted. Down to the 3v3, we do have an injured Sabrosa. But for the most part, TSM are held onto the site. We have a player down in hell, Drone, alongside Sabrosa, playing a little bit further from the plant spot. We also have to identify it's not a default plant spot. It's in the most absolute corner of the spike. Oh, sorry, of where it is impossible to plant, but now they're starting to come through the trade. Drone with one. Now it's another one that's coming in. He's looking for the ace, starting to run away. It's T not going to be responding in kind. What they are going to be doing, however, is playing very aggressively down C long. And guess who's there? With the operator, it's Dicey. Yeah. Dicey takes care of Wardell. And the retrade was there, however. Sub Rosa gets the best of Hiko. He goes in aggressive. Nitro dispatches of him. 100 Thieves, numbers advantage. Yeah, now they're gonna try to at least push out the smoke. Hayes is, pay is playing point defense, and as soon as back sight's gonna find one, it's traded. But the advantage is still, of course, 200 thieves. Paranoia is not gonna flash out the right side. Hayes was playing towards that side, and now it's all up to Hayes in a one v two. But the spike is not in possession of 100 thieves. Dicey and Steel, and it's all up to Hayes. He's gonna play wow. towards logs. Dicey, oh, wow. oh, sees the weapon. Now it's down to Steel. Neural theft this round means he knows exactly where Steel is located. Now they're gonna play. Duck, duck, goose, hiding with behind the cover. Steel just holding on. Seven 40 bullets. seconds left. Hayes has to move because Steel knows exactly where he is. He's just holding the angle. Pre fires the shot down to the 1v1. That's the camera. He's going to bait it and swing. Bait it and swing. He cannot find the shots from top to bottom. Oh, oh once no. again, it's the battle of C Long. We've seen this time and time again, but Dicey with the crossfire. The shots are going to land through the smoke. The wall goes up. Asuna trying to escape. Cutler will put the nail in the coffin down to the 4v4. A bloodbath here down the long side. And a lot of the members of TSM have committed to this action. They're now going to start to pull away and maybe reconsider where they want to get that spike planted. Well, and if they can get in any information from Hayes elsewhere on the map, they can kind of open things up and give them some more options to work with. It looks like he's considering working his way up garage. Dicey has that angle on lockdown. As you see, members of 100 Thieves start to slowly but surely rotate their way back towards C. Revealing area. Cutler, gonna try to get some info. 
Yeah, where Tell goes oh. in. Oh, man, Dicey rips his head off. Yep, that's an important factor as well to consider. Down to one final player is Hayes. He seems to always be in these positions. The spike is, of course, to his left, as you can see there. But the rest of 100 Thieves are here. They know exactly where the spike is. A clean hatch shot from Hayes. That's going to be two. Hayes in a 1v2 scenario. Steel starting to rotate over, but Dicey swings from behind. TSM for a top four spot in the Premier Valorant event. So Bros is able to get one, but he gets traded out. Steel works his way up, and he's met with Hayes, unfortunately, in the garage window. TSM up one. Yeah, they anticipated the same aggression towards that suicide. We've seen, what, you know, TSM kind of flip-flop between how they want to play the defensive side, constantly applying pressure towards C-Long or A-Long. This time they guess A-Long, and it doesn't work out. But the advantage in terms of who is still alive does favor TSM. They're going to start to rotate through, figure out how they want to get onto the site. We've seen Spider in a position yep. like this similar. A lot of Omens actually play towards that side. And a lot of defensive teams don't anticipate the Omen playing there. They still check in nonetheless. Recon oh, Bolt's not going to help out with that. He thinks they're coming from that side, but they're not. He's just going to reposition. The Recon Bolt's helping out. Wardell has no idea. Nitro with two. Nitro with three. It's all down to Haze and Eco Flanks. 100 Thieves have done it. They've eliminated TSM.